Hi, right, Robin with OxyDry. And uh, I'm here cleaning uh, for a repeat customer. And um, I, uh, I've cleaned this carpet at least half a dozen or more times now, I guess. And the first time I met this customer, uh, I got to meet this beautiful little doggy. And um, this is a Havanese dog. And uh, I think he called him Fid Fidel. <laughs> and there's a story about these little dogs, and I've, I've got to share it with all of you who are watching my videos because it's um, a, a shocking, it's a horrifying story, and um, but it's a story of hope, and um, and uh, it's a very, it's just, it's a tragic story. These little dogs, and uh, likely. Most of you have never seen one of these dogs, a Havanese breed. Um, and the Havanese get their name from the city of Havana because they're a breed that is native to Cuba. And um, I'm not sure what year it was, but when the communists took over Cuba, one of the things that they did is they decided that here, we're going to clean the carpet while we talk here. They decided that uh, it was not um, right for people to have these dogs because they were uh, a dog that only rich people would have, which is probably at least partially true. But nevertheless, because these were these dogs are about the size of a Shih Tzu, which is a small smaller breed dog not a not a not, not the the little tiny guys but just a I know I guess they'd probably be uh, probably between 10 and 15 pounds I guess but um, so um, Fidel Castro the uh, dictator of uh, Cuba decided that uh, it just wasn't right for people to own these dogs as they were kind of a I guess he viewed them at least as a rich person's dog. And uh, so he uh, decided that it was necessary to eliminate the breed in Cuba. And uh, that's exactly what they did. They went through the, uh, found all the Havanese dogs and they killed them all. You know, took them away from people people's pets and whatever and they murdered them all it's an absolutely horrifying horrifying thing that this ideology communism had led to that uh, I mean there's awful things that they do which is worse than that but this is just another example so and um, uh, when I had met my customer he had that little doggy and um, he told me the story so I was I was very just shocked to hear that but um, the next time I went to see him, this is a, I just want to add a little note before I continue on. Um, the next time I cleaned for him about a year or so later, his uh, doggy had died. And so he no longer had his dog. And I've cleaned the carpet quite a number of times since then. But anyway, back to the story. Well, as it turns out though, thankfully, um, I guess there was enough people that were aware this was about to happen. And they decided to take matters into their own hands and they were able to to um, smuggle um, uh, a few dogs out of Cuba. I can't remember exactly how many it was. Um, um, the number seven is sort of in my mind right now, but it might have been a few more than that. I, I, it wasn't, I'm pretty sure it wasn't more than a dozen. And uh, they were able to smuggle these dogs out at risk, of course, of their own lives. Because if they had been caught doing that, I'm, you know, probably they would have been at least in prison, if not actually put to death for disobeying the boss, <laughs> the dictator. Um, but the Havanese breed was almost and purposefully almost exterminated, made extinct. And it just, just boggles my mind to think that there are people that are so wicked that they would think that this would be an appropriate thing to do. I mean, these poor little animals, you know, they're, they're just 
they're just little dogs and they just give and they receive love and attention and yeah, these are pets that they would have torn out of the hands of people who love them but that was what they decided or he decided they should be done and so he did that but um thankfully they were able to get um, um quite a few of them out enough that they were able to um, save the breed and they went to various uh, well maybe it was one breeder i'm not sure exactly how it came down but so they were able to get these dogs away from cuba and uh, they set about re-establishing the breed with careful breeding of these uh, you know dozen or, or less dogs and all of the Havanese dogs that are now around and there's not that many yet um, come from that that little group that was smuggled out of Cuba oh, isn't that an incredible story but uh, oh they're just a wonderful dog and I have met other Havanese dogs before but pretty rare like um, I think I've met maybe maybe two others in the 25 years or so 26 years I've been doing this they're very rare but now I know I didn't know why until he told me this um, but um, anyway in his case his 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 uh, his little dog had died and uh, he was very heartbroken and initially he uh, he didn't say he was going to go and get a dog I think he he did have to go through the mourning process because he had his little doggy since he was a pup and then uh, but anyway <laughs> it's over a year ago I guess now um, I came back and cleaned this carpet so a little over a year ago I was here and he was all excited because <laughs> he was telling me hey I'm gonna get another doggy and there was a breeder and a, a, um, a, a very credible breeder in a town about uh, two hours away from where we live here in Kelowna and uh, so he was going to go there the following week and pick up his new little pup and so uh, <laughs> that was just wonderful news to hear that of course and um, and I haven't seen him for over a year but um, maybe six months or so ago um, I was actually in this this is a, a gated community and I was doing uh, a neighbor down the road from him here and uh, and we were talking I think they had a dog and we were talking about dogs and everything and and then I we started talking about the the neighbor this guy and uh, then this lady down the road there she was saying oh he got himself a, a new puppy and she's so cute <laughs> so uh, and I was just I was so glad to hear that you know and um, so this is the first time I've uh, Oops, losing a Kleenex box there. <laughs> the first time I've been back since he got the new pup. So when I realized I was coming here, I was, uh, <laughs> I was really looking forward to uh, meeting his new puppy. And I did meet the puppy. She's not here now. He took her away. He went out for a little bit. Oh, she is such a beautiful little creature. She really is. Very affectionate. She gave me kisses on my nose. Just a beautiful little animal. And, and I just... It's just so wonderful to hear about this, this, this breed that this wicked man tried to eliminate. And uh, this was uh, thwarted by these people who risked their lives for these dogs. You know, it's just, just an amazing thing. Anyway, carpet cleaning. <laughs> These are the, you know, meeting people and, uh, you know, having these conversations with them is one of the highlights of doing this work and um, being able to, uh, you know, learn of new things. And, and this is a, a sad tale, and yet in the end, uh, a wonderful thing that people did stand, uh, step up and, and rescue these little doggies. So, anyway, I'm going to keep cleaning the carpet. So... Um, the carpet, again, it was more than a year since I was here, and you can see that it was uh, pretty, quite soiled in the traffic lanes. Uh, it was a very light carpet. Um, 
he's getting some footwear transfer going on on this as well but it is coming out easily and partly because every time I clean it there of course is a protector that's included which gives it the ability to resist soiling and staining like it did when it was new so that's part of our standard cleaning uh, just the way I do things and uh, so I'm just going to uh, groom this and put this back this carpet is um, I think it's around it's, uh, it's over 10 years I'm pretty sure between 12 and 15 years old I believe uh, overall it's actually in pretty good shape it is showing wear in the traffic lanes but it always cleans up very nicely looks pretty much new <laughs> so he's always very happy with the results and uh, I come back here on a regular basis so drop this down and I'll uh, run the uh, fiber pad over here I'm using a hog's hair as you can see the carpet releases the soil very easily because again I've been cleaning it about once a year And uh, this is a nylon, one of the, um, not a necessarily considered a, a great wearing carpet, but it's been standing up really well because, as I say, I've been cleaning it for oh, probably at least six years now, I think. I guess he's training his little doggy to ring the bell. That's pretty cute. You can teach doggies to do that, to ring the bell when they when they want to go out. I'm gonna just get in this corner here a little bit. Before I'm done, I'll, I'll actually get in in here with the uh, doodle bug, but for now I'm just going to get that over there. But I'll use a, the doodle bug and the pad to finish that before I'm done. Okay. Looking good. So now I'm gonna just go over here just a little bit more. This is uh, the most high wear area right here off of the uh, dining room. It's kind of a um, through a passageway, I guess. Bit of a highway. Okay. That'll work for that. All right. I've got this uh, pathway over here to do before I'm done. But uh, <clears throat> I won't video that. I'll just record what I'm doing over here. That will be enough. Make sure I'm a little more centered there. There we go. Anyway. Carpet's cleaning up really nicely as usual. 
Um, I did um, use my trigger sprayer and I put a little bit of a pre-spray on the high traffic areas but um, I used very little as usual. I probably used, uh, it wasn't actually this bottle, but I probably used maybe, maybe that much. And let's go over here. Zip, zip. <laughs> This area of the room gets virtually no uh, walking on it at all. I think I see a little bit of a or a yellowish spot here. I think there might have been an upchuck or maybe a pea there. Now this actually is um, this is um, um, a release it product I got in here, which is the Hydrox. Uh, I can't remember what I, it's called Hydrox, I think. Um, I've been using it a little bit on so, certain things. It seems to work pretty well, um, but anyway, actually somebody gave it to me, so I figure I might as well use it up. <laughs> it seems to work really well on uh, urine stains, actually, um, as it does have some peroxide in it. However, uh, I used some on my own carpet. There was a blood spot. <laughs> I had a nosebleed I think and I had a drop of blood on the carpet and uh, so I put some hydrox on it and um, it has peroxide in it as I mentioned and my carpet is an olefin and lo and behold I now have a little bit of a bleached out spot on my olefin carpet where I put the hydrox so I, it's possible I might have had it mixed up stronger than recommended. I'm not positive about that, but still, um, you don't expect color loss to happen with an olefin carpet, although it can happen. So that was um, uh, concerning, <laughs> but you know, at least it was my own carpet. So I'm going to be very careful whenever I use this. I put it on very sparingly and go over it immediately with the machine. So, just a, a word of caution there for you guys. Oh, you know what? I'm uh, going to head into the bedroom here in a sec. He's just actually going to come on the door here. And uh, I don't like recording when the customer is around normally. So we'll go in here. As you can see, it is cleaning up very well. There's a wear path right here, of course, but other than the wear, it looks really good. Yeah, he's coming in the door. This is um this job is just over two hundred dollars, so it's not a not a very big job. The whole thing probably takes me maybe about an hour or so. So it's not very long. So we go over here.
Nice and easy. I'm going to get that chair up and out of the way. <laughs> That's a heavy chair. That is actual real cotton velvet. Um, this is the one that you have to be very careful when you clean it because you can uh, affect the uh, the velvet. You can do it, but there's uh, um, you have to be very careful for sure. But we don't see the co actual cotton very often anymore. We used to see it a lot uh, 30, 40 years ago. But now it's pretty rare, fortunately. <laughs> you have to groom that stuff very carefully, too. Okay. So, um, I'm going to stop and uh, I'm going to take a look at the uh, pad. That's fairly dirty. So, I will go over all the... Uh, Soiled areas again with that on the flip side, and then I'll be ready to groom. But this is where I'm gonna bring the. Hang on a minute. I think maybe he's not here. Oh, oh okay. He's not here. <laughs> he did come in, but I guess he went out again. Anyway, we'll go back over the the uh, high traffic areas with the uh, B side of the pad. <laughs> you can see the carpet is it's just cleaning up really nice. These nylons are just great to work with. Looking good. Mm hmm. So I'll groom. Behind here, and then I can slide this couch back. Nice and easy, so smooth and uh, easily this machine maneuvers. Oh, I was going to mention something. pH. Um, once upon a time, like 30 years ago or so, everybody was into the uh, power of your carpet cleaning product was found in the pH. The higher the pH, the better. Well, things have changed. And the cleaners I use are almost all neutral pH. I don't even care about the, you know, how strong the pH is as long as it cleans well. 
and you certainly don't need to go to the um, increasing your pH up to 11, 12, or 13, my goodness, to clean your carpet. And, and I know there are some guys that are into that and, you know, they boost everything with ammonia or whatever. That is very old school thinking. Um, the technology of these cleaning products now has, has changed so much. And uh, we don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> well, there she is. Can you see her? Oh, there she is. There's the little girl. <laughs> oh, she's a beautiful little dog, eh? A beautiful little creature. But anyway, um, uh, the problem, one of the problems with pH is if you clean a carpet with a high pH, and I mean high as in above, say, 9 or so, you actually um, will leave that carpet in a state of high pH even um, without, if you don't neutralize it with something on the acidic side, like, say, vinegar, for example, because you can't neutralize it with water because water's not on the acid side. Anyway, um, most of us uh, VLM guys are using proper products that are specifically made for doing this type of cleaning, and most of them are neutral pH or close to it. And so we don't have to be concerned about messing around with uh, the pH being, uh, you know, going too high or whatever, because what I'm cleaning with right now is neutral. It's about not 7 or 7.5. The Nanomax, I know that uh, Procyon is another fairly popular product, another uh, or, uh, natural product, um, or green product anyway, uh, health rating of zero. This has a health rating of zero. Uh, I know Green Dragon is a health rating of zero. I think it does anyway. And I believe it's also a neutral pH. It cleans fantastic. So if you are watching or taking advice from someone who's telling you to clean with high pH, just know that that individual was uh, way behind the times and um, the cleaning products that we use now, which are definitely working better than even 10 years ago, uh, you know, this idea of increasing your pH is, uh, is a, a bad idea because you can actually chemically burn the carpet and the stain master carpets are not supposed to be cleaned at anything higher than 9.5 pH. I think that's the limit, upper limit, so just bear that in mind. You actually can mess somebody's carpet up by using too high pH. It actually affects the uh, stain master quality, um, leaving it more uh, susceptible to staining because it basically strips the uh, protector off the carpet fiber. So. Um, it was, I think, 1986 or so when uh, the Stainmaster carpets first came on the market. And um, that was one of the th reasons why there was such a um, radical rethinking of all the cleaning products as manufacturers realized that if they uh, were cleaning carpets, Stainmaster carpets with the pH, above 9.5 they were out avoiding warranty and causing all kinds of issues you can actually have the carpet um you can actually affect the dye of the carpet um i mean even a solid color carpet could have the color go weird on you uh, it can change the uh, feel of the carpet afterwards the carpet after it dries it can feel hard and crunchy because the alkalinity is that's what it kind of feels. Also, um, a carpet that is in a state of high alkalinity will have a tendency to um, uh, go uh, be dull and, and go, go dull and dingy quite quickly. So the ultimate goal is to end up with a carpet that is neutral pH. And uh, if you're using a VLM process, then you can certainly use a, a neutral pH cleaner. There's many of them out there. And you don't have to worry about whether or not you're needing to do an acid or a, a, a neutralizing rinse on the acid side of the pH scale in order to bring your uh, pre-spray, your alkaline pre-spray back down. 
And I know that there's guys out there that are using very alkaline free sprays for VLM. There's a couple of regular video guys that are doing that, and probably you know who I'm talking about, but very, very bad for the carpet in the long run. Um, and especially if you were to clean a carpet with uh, a wool carpet, you can really screw it up quickly, very quickly, um, by using too high pH. So um, if you're a new guy, um, be wise and go to the professional suppliers uh, who are going to steer you right and recommend products that are not going to create problems for you. Um, the NCAP store is a great place. Uh, Damon there will give you good advice and guidance. Um, and uh, John at Bonnet Pro, another one. And there's another supplier. I can't remember the Vacaway, I guess. They are another good uh, supplier selling great products. So stick with the pros. Uh, with a, It can provide you with an actual SDS sheet. You don't want to be mixing up your own concoctions and then having a problem after the fact. Some of these guys are actually using products that are very harmful for the uh, to use on a certainly on a regular basis. If you've got a product that's got a health rating of two or above, you know you got a problem. And three is really bad. And <laughs> unbelievably that's what some of these guys are actually cleaning with and recommending to uh, the unsuspecting novice. So just be aware that you could be easily getting led, aside, led astray and into some uh, real significant trouble. And of course then there's the health um, concerns regarding using a product that is, uh, especially if you're spraying it around and you're breathing it, breathing it in, um, and using something with a health rating of three, that is very, very foolish. And you don't need to do that. And the idea that, well, you're going to save money, well, that's ridiculous. Because these products that we use are at such uh, concentrated dilutions that literally it costs one job only costs you a few dollars for product. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a necessary part of your expenses which you're charging for anyway right <laughs> so uh, anyway i've uh, done videos where i've addressed this in more detail in uh, over the last year or so but i just want to mention about the ph there because uh, i know that seems to be for some reason the uh, focus of some of these guys and it's <laughs> Like I said, it's so um, old thinking. It's it's just uh, quite, quite ridiculous because there are so many good products out there that are safe. I mean, this product I clean with right now, the Nanomax, is wool safe. And all, ideally, for most of the jobs that that you do, that's all you need is a, a neutral pH cleaner anyway. So, anyway, just some thoughts. Anyway, I'm going to finish off this job and uh, groom it, and then I'll be done. Thank you for watching. I'll turn off my little safety valve. So have a good day. Bye now.